basketball. The thing that is funny is I didn't play basketball in high school. Mm-hmm. My dad was a wrestler. He was like, he took fourth Olympic trials. And growing wait, up, whoa, 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 what? Yeah, he was pretty good. Damn, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's just a little bit. We knew at that point we we're like, oh, we're done. <laughs> Well, this is Sportscast from the Sports Stuff show, The Kings of Comedy. I'm Adam. I'm Carter. And I'm Zach. And let's get right into it. So obviously, uh, you know, our fourth guest, I think it's fourth. Yeah, yeah so we got Zach. Um, it's really awesome. I met Zach over the Bronco ambassador, yeah. I think. That's how we met. Mm-hmm. Um, I... And this is the first time you guys. I, I haven't mean, met you, but you look so familiar. Yeah, well, I, I was on. I'm on the Pike B team, so you're, okay. you're, you're dropping Steph Curry three. I'm just rubbing yeah, salt okay. in the wound. Yeah, rubbing salt. I knew I recognized you because <laughs> I. The reason you didn't recognize me that well is because I was on the bench most of the game. I'm not mm. a basketball player. Well, I, I watched like part of the final game. And oh yeah, I that remember was tough as well. Yeah, I thought. The A team's crazy, man. I think our A team could. I think what they should do is they should take the winner of the men's league, the open men's league, and have the fraternity um, league That'd be good. championship play like almost kind of like a super champion would be kind of cool. That'd be really good. Legit. Actually, we have a lot of guys who could have probably played at least D two basketball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, who? Wait, who won that one? Oh, hey, Pike won. They yeah. won by like twenty four. Really? And the thing that was kind of a bummer <laughs> was, um, since it was an extra mile arena, it was like a really cool experience, and like since it was Pike v Pike. It was just kind of like, you know, this cool opportunity, but they cut the game out at minute 43 because they said they were behind schedule. And like, I really? understand that we were losing and we weren't going to win, but, yeah. you know, me being a senior and, like, this first time they were playing extra minor, it was a cool experience. So, you like, we wanted to take the full minute and 43 seconds yeah. to keep playing just for yeah. fun. Like, you know, maybe give it to, you know, shout out my little Jason Sims. Like, he can he can do windmill dunks. Like, he, he, he's got balance. So, like, <laughs> letting those guys just have a heyday. Kind of like, you know, the all-star. Yeah. yeah. And, like, the last minute they're just, like, letting John ja Moran or whoever – just throw out crazy dunks. But it was a really cool experience. But yeah, we lost. I got one bucket. That was my Oof. I had a step back three. They got I it saw. on they got it I on camera. That. So that was that was awesome. I mean, me not being a basketball player, I was thankful to get one bucket yeah. on a D one <laughs> uh, basketball court. Yeah. Um I didn't I wasn't on the team because I definitely not, I cut it I cut a, it at football. Not a basketball player. <laughs> yep. Not I don't I'm not even a really a basketball fan. Like I'm yeah. let alone player. So yeah. Um but you're on the soccer team, so mm-hmm. Uh, what got you to join the soccer team? Yeah, well, when I came to college, I knew that I didn't want to go to a smaller school. Like, I played baseball my entire life. I was a three-sport athlete growing up, and baseball is my main sport. I played soccer in the fall, um, and I swam during the, the winter time. And then in Montana, high school, baseball isn't a thing. So it was, like, legion ball and, like, travel ball. And I just didn't love the game enough of baseball to go play at, like, a JC or, you know, and which is, like, an awesome route to go. I just knew I didn't have the passion for it. So when I came to Boise State, I really enjoyed soccer, and I wanted to stay involved with athletics, and I saw that they had a club team. So I just kind of reached out to the president, and he said, show up two weeks before move-in, and then just started going in two days and been in ever since. Oh, so you've been all four years then? Yeah, the I'm like one of like five Man. players who's been in it all four years every single semester. Wow. Yeah. How has it been, like, the difference between your first year and, like, your final year on the yeah, team? Yeah, uh, I think the difference is we just – gotten a lot closer as a team I think competitive wise we're kind of on the same level last season we didn't have the best record but we've been playing a lot higher competition and as every year that I've been on the team it's just been a lot more fun and I think it's important to have fun when you're playing at a higher level even though it is club it's very competitive like in our conference in the fall we play against BYU and they won the national championship four out of the last six years so it's pretty crazy Um, But we've had I've had two different coaches, which has been a really cool experience to get two different coaching perspectives. And like I said, it's just been fun. It's kept me out of trouble, kept me out of jail. It's always a joke that I make. Um, (laughs) But it's been a good commitment for sure. That's great. What was like the biggest win or like the most fun game that you've played? Like, was there like opponent or like? Yeah. So I'd probably say my freshman year, the coolest moment we actually lost in the game. But the coolest moment was when we were playing BYU at home. And. The reason it was cool is BYU, they travel. Like, they bring entire buses full of their fans. So we had, like, 300 Mm -hmm. people um, at the game, which I've never played in front of 300 fans for a soccer game because in Montana you don't get a lot of people out for soccer games, usually, like, the Friday Night Lights for football. Um, But we held them 0-0 at halftime, which was kind of a huge feat because it was the first game, I think, in 60-some games where they hadn't scored in the first half. So we're like, damn, we're in this. And we had the fraternity showing up because we had a couple guys representing different fraternities on the team. And... 
I got subbed in at like the 75th minute, let's say. I don't remember exactly, but I was – guy was coming up on the left-hand side near the, uh, the – like the stands, and I had like a slide tackle, and I got the ball. So like just hearing all my buddies and all the fans like freaking out, and then I got the ball, I passed it down the line, and they crossed, and we scored, and it was 2-1 at that point. So like I was like right in front of the student section, like kind of freaking out, as you know, as a freshman. So yeah, that was pretty cool. And then this year in the fall, we were playing against Utah Valley, and I got subbed on in like the 89th minute. It was a tied game, and my buddy who's also in Pike, Charlie Scott, got subbed in with me, and the goalie kicked the ball um, from their line like a free kick. Charlie got the ball and passed to me, and I scored. So I scored a game winner, which was pretty cool. And then it was really fun. Uh, my teammate Brady Zacco. We're in the car all excited. He goes, Zach, look at this. And he grabbed the ball. He took the game-winning <laughs> ball from Utah Valley. So I had that back oh, man, of the house. So shout awesome. out Brady for getting me the game-winning ball. So that was pretty cool. Did the, like, the players on the team sign it? No, no. Dude, wh- I, why not? I probably should. One, maybe maybe this, this season I'll get him to sign it. But it was a pretty yeah. fun experience. And we also got it on film, too. This season we got, um, in the fall, we got a trace, which is a, like, basically like a soccer program. You put like a little tracker um, in a sleeve and you wrap around your dominant leg and it will like track um, the entire game which is kind of cool yeah. so I was able to send the game winner to all my family and stuff which is something we've never had before mm-hmm. in the past three years of playing so that was a really cool experience as well dude that's great yeah that's awesome um are you going like are you playing for the intramurals as well for soccer as well yeah so I've actually never done the soccer intramurals because I never mm-hmm. wanted to get hurt uh, my dad was a big time athlete growing up so I just was very honed in on discipline and not like risking getting injuries so, like I never like skied or snowboard when I was playing sports because I didn't want to get hurt but I've never won intramurals at Boise State so it's kind of like <laughs> one of my final like yeah. check marks I want to do so definitely going to run the 7v7 and try to get that championship for Pike because we're also in a really close competition in the Greek Cup ATO is three points behind us and mm. I'm a competitive individual so we got to bring home the, the hardware I yeah. didn't know it was even that close yeah, honestly. yeah. It's really, well the thing that's kind of silly is They've been doing all like the co ed and the tournament stuff, and they mm. get points towards their organization okay. for it. Which, oh, really? I mean, oh, the rules are the like... rules, so I'm not going to say like, you know, it's dumb, but it's something we didn't know about. So we've just been doing, we've just been winning all the fraternity leagues. Yeah. yeah. And they've been doing like the co ed stuff, which props to them. They're playing the game well. Man. But we're only three points ahead. And ATO last time, I think, I can't remember if they won or if they, they're in the championship against Pike. So like the ATO Pike uh, soccer rivalry is going to be pretty good. I'm excited. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. My roommate is in ATO. He'll probably be out there. <laughs> yeah, no, ATO, they're, they're a really fun organization to play against because a lot of friend friendships between the two fraternities. And so, like, when you get out there, it's competitive, but it's, like, friendly competitive. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. like, between the lines, you're chirping, pushing, and shoving. But once the whistle's blown, it's just, like, uh, all love type stuff, which mm-hmm. I appreciate because, you know, how fraternities can kind of get hostile towards one another. So it's all, you know, <laughs> We've like, heard. All, all, yeah. all love of the game. <laughs> From the grapevine. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think there was, like, um, for, like, football – there was like something ridiculous. Like they had eleven fights just in general for Boise State intramurals, and ten of them were from boy like from fraternity football. Mm-hmm. And it was like, don't even know how many at this point. But yeah, <laughs> um, so you know, it's your last year on campus. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you've kind of done you know sports, but is there like other things that you've really like been adamantly involved in that you feel like have been kind of vital to yeah, your time here? I, I mean. Everyone asks me if I'm ready to graduate, and I say yes in terms of I'm very grateful for the four years that I've had. Um, I've done a lot of different things in terms of just outreach stuff, like starting the fraternity. So I'm in Pike, Pi Kappa Alpha. Shout out Josh behind the camera over there. Yeah. But we, <laughs> we started this um, freshman year, so we're founding fathers as well as you guys oh, for SIGEP, nice. which is yep. a really cool opportunity. Like less than 1% of all Greek initiates can say that they're founding fathers. So just building an organization from nothing to where we're at now is a really cool experience. And Within my four years in Pike, I've done uh, the Brotherhood Chair, I've been philanthropy, and then also I was on the exec for Vice President of New Member Development, which was super cool. Um, I've also been a part of the Honors College for all four years, so I've had some really great mentorship in that. And then kind of a fun one that a lot of people were jealous of, but was I got the Pub Beer Ambassador. Oh, I saw thing, that. Which was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, they reached out to my best friend, Ryan Arzu, and I on Instagram, and we kind of thought it was a scam, not going to lie, <laughs> but, like, their verified, like, mm-hmm. national page was like, hey, we want to do this, like, student ambassador program. Like, we thought you guys would be awesome for the gig. We're like, okay, we reached out, set up, and we didn't think it was – we just thought they were going to give us free beer, but they paid us as well. So not only did really? we get free merch, free beer, we got paid as well for three months' worth of jobs, and, I mean – 
we're all 21 at, I mean, Ryan yeah. and I are 21. So it was just like a cool opportunity that most people don't get to do, which was a lot of fun. It was really cool in terms of working with a large organization and like figuring out how to do proper branding and stuff and making sure it was all, all legit. Dude, that's so dope. I remember seeing that and I'm like, it's like, damn. Yeah. It's Isn't funny it? too. Cause I, I mean, wasn't it you, Ryan and someone else? Yeah. Uh, Annika. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. She's from Australia. She's super cool. Yeah, she's fun to work with. And then also the Bronco Shop thing with Sinai, the mm -hmm. modeling gig. I actually hate my photos being taken, but I kind of did it to get out of my comfort zone. Yeah, right. Like, you, <laughs> I saw him at, like, some of the photo shoots. He was, like, the – that's how, like, I kind of saw you for the first time or, like, met you was at these photo shoots. And he's, like, completely outgoing. You were, like, taking uh -huh. random photos. You literally crushed up, like, a flower and went – <laughs> yeah, like, well, I mean, I wasn't always as good as it. Like, I'm a firm yeah. believer that you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations to get comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. Like, I believe that you have to step out of your comfort zone to, like, have personal growth. Because I, like, I've always hated my photos getting taken, even though... Um, and then I saw this uh, modeling thing. I was like, oh, that'd be kind of fun. Then, obviously, you get some free merch with it, which yeah. has been super fun. Um, so, shout out to Nye for having a great program over there. Yeah, I mean, um, she really kind of makes it really fun too yeah. but yeah i totally agree she's with like that all of our mom she always takes care of us <laughs> yeah. and then it was really cool because i stayed over uh, in boise for the summer which is my first time in boise mm -hmm. and just having that group to go do photo shoots with at the river and stuff was a really good time yeah that's awesome um and you are graduating this semester do you have like a plan after college um, or anything so I'm, st I'm studying kinesiology uh, with emphasis in exercise science and the goal is going to be a pediatric pa but as of right now, I'm taking a gap year because for PA school and med school, you got to take uh, patient care hours. So it's just like working with patients to kind of get experience. And for PA school, most schools are looking for about 1,500 hours. So I'm just going to be working pretty much full time as well as kind of pursuing the soccer dream and kind of seeing what I can do with that. And then after the year, I'll kind of have a good gauge of I'm going to pursue soccer full time or if I'll get a big boy job and go to PA school. <laughs> How are you going to pursue soccer after college? Is that like a joining a I don't know how soccer yeah, works. Yeah, so kind of the <laughs> I don't way know it how works. works. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're good. So, so the way that it works in the United States, so you have the MLS, which is like professional yeah. soccer, and then you have USL and UPSL. So USL is kind of like the farmer league, kind of like what, uh, like kind of like the G League to the NBA, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's like semi-pro where you have contracts and stuff. And then the UPSL is the league below that. It's still considered semi-pro, but I'd almost put like kind of a quotation around because there's no contracts, but still really high level. Mm -hmm. And in Boise, we have uh, the Cutthroats, which is considered a UPSL team. So it's kind of like that third tier. So as of right now, I actually have second round of tryouts coming up on Wednesday and Thursday from 6 to 7.30. I think they're going to be out there um, on Lincoln Turf. And we'll just kind of do that for a year, trying to get my skill up and then see doing some tryouts, trying to get in some academies and stuff. But just trying to chase the dream, you know? You only get to be 20 and young one, so might as well yeah. go for it, right? Yeah. Man, that's dope. I mean, Appreciate obviously, uh, most people can't do that as well. Like, you don't see me. Trying. I, you know, you're asking me beforehand how I got into podcasts and, like, doing this show. And honestly, that was kind of because I realized that I wasn't that good enough at football. <laughs> so where I was like, yeah. you, know, I, you know, if I would have stayed in sports, I got to kind of pivot a bit. But, I mean, that's awesome that, you know, you've been able to do your sport for uh, as long as, you know, yeah, as you've I been able well, to. I think, I think one thing that's, too, is important because everyone does it is, like, it's not it's not about comparing, right? Like, yeah. you, it, there's no reason for you to compare your soccer skill to my soccer skill. And kind of a cool quote that I saw one time, it's called The Iron Cowboy. It was a Netflix documentary, and it was about a man that did 50 Ironmans in 50 days in 50 different states. <laughs> Yeah, crazy what? feet. That's real. Yeah, it's real. And for like the people that don't know what an Ironman is, it's it's 112 miles on the bike. It's a marathon, so it's 26.3 miles, and it's 2.4 miles of swimming, yeah. all like consecutive. That's crazy. That's, I have an uncle who's done five or six, and oh, I wow. thought that was insane. No, he but did 50, 50, 50, 50. And eat wait Whoa. in each state too. In each state. So that's like, that's just a flex. Like yeah. he was way like. Yeah, that's so, incredible. So, so to my point about comparing, it was really cool. So. In a couple of the states, when he finished the marathon, his mom, who's obviously much older, would run the last couple of miles. Mm. And he's asked, he's getting questions like why his mom doesn't do the full marathon or like why she doesn't do it every time. And he, he said, no one should ever compare what they're challenging or their hard is to someone else's hard. And I think it's important, you know, in today's society, it's all about cons comparing like how many Instagram followers you have or like how many points did you score? Or, you know, how many podcasts did you, you just kind of got to focus on yourself. Like if you get stuck comparing, you're never going to push past what you can actually do. That's very true. One of my favorite quotes of all time, I think it was Theo Roosevelt. 
Theodore That Roosevelt? could be totally wrong. But <laughs> we, he won't, said, we won't fact check we'll, we'll right throw up, now. We'll, <laughs> we'll throw up the but it's thing. Com- comparison it is the thief of joy. I think that quote is fire, and I think that ties perfectly into that. So Yeah, I and like that a lot. Comparison is the It probably joy. wasn't Theodore Roosevelt now that I think about it. <laughs> we'll, we'll look it up, and then we'll see. We'll fact check it. I gotta it. know. Continue. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like this is also very off topic. Mm-hmm. I feel like your voice sounds like you're just a motivational speaker oh. over there. <laughs> Even with that quote, it just kind of like put two and two together. And I'm like, it was, oh, it was, there you go. it was, man. He knows, he knows the stuff. Yeah, he knows, <laughs> the stuff. Question, I, he knows quotes. Question. I know he knows quotes. I know yeah. quotes. All right. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. I think, you know, I just felt like I was put on this earth to do like something like bigger than just myself. And the way my mom raised me is just like make a positive impact in that world. And I really kind of di- like dove into podcasts and re- reading books because I think it's profound to learn from people that have lived life longer than you. Mm-hmm. It's not saying that they have a better understanding or know it better, but they are able to teach from their failures and whatnot. And I think failure is a catalyst of growth. So I just have failed a lot, and I've tried to learn from those failures and become a better person. And obviously these podcasts is a great time to talk about you know, humility and talking about those failures and the things that you've learned because a lot of my life I've compared myself to others. You know, a lot, a lot of times I've compared about how many Instagram followers that guy has or, you know, how many people are saying hi to that person. And really, that gets you nowhere in life. And Kevin Hart on the uh, Joe Rogan podcast, it's the second one. It's where he's wearing the blue hoodie. The first podcast oh, yeah. is really good. But the second one, he talks about how he's just trying to beat him. And, like, TikTok makes it in, like, this, you know, cool, like, background. Voice. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I'm just trying to beat me every single day, like, looking in the mirror, trying to beat that person. And it's profound, and I really like that quote, actually. Yeah. So it's comparison is... Comparison the is the thief of joy. Thief of joy, I yeah. like that. Yeah. I learned something new today. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, my quote is, if you're not first or last, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't chew Big Red, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, that was great. <laughs> great motivational speeches, I guess, or quotes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Anyways, uh, so are you a big basketball fan? Yeah, I do really enjoy basketball. The thing that is funny is I didn't play basketball in high school. Mm-hmm. My dad was a wrestler. He was like, he took fourth Olympic trials. And growing wait, up, whoa, 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 what? Yeah, he was pretty good. Damn, um, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is a little bit, you know. Yeah, he uh, he coached at Stanford. He wrestled at Northern Iowa and wrestled at Wisconsin, and then trained in Colorado at the Olympic Training Center. He wrestled at 114 pounds internationally. Um, but growing up, he just told me basketball was for wimps. So, like, he never let me play. <laughs> and I'm not saying, like, I, I hate him for it or regret it, but, like, playing basketball at the rec, like, I really enjoy I'm a very competitive person. Like, Josh yeah. mm-hmm. can attest on that. Like, I'm a very competitive person. And basketball, it's so much fun. It's, like, a great display of athleticism. It's very competitive. It's constantly going. So I've really fallen in love with it a lot more the last five years. Yeah, and I feel like the biggest thing that I've kind of realized with basketball is from the surface level, you always think it's, like, oh, it's, you know, they just – don't really do much. They just kind of shoot it. But they have to, you know, you have to run back and forth, and that's the worst part Especially about basketball. Especially when you're running the top of a 2-3 zone for 40 minutes every game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Well, it's, like, it's, it's, it's funny, too, like being a soccer right. player. Like, you know, most people know soccer is like a very high cardiovascular yeah. sport. So like, I would consider myself in pretty good shape because I'm playing soccer year-round. But when I go to the rec, like I'm out of breath. Like yeah. playing those intramural games, I'm like, yeah. I could use a water break right now. I know. It's a and different then, type of conditioning. When it gets so hot in the gym, too, yeah. that doesn't help. Well, it's even funnier, too, because then you, like, you ask, it's like, oh, why didn't you just shoot it there, you know, like, from three or, like, from, you know, half court. If you like, yo, you know you can make it. But it's like, he's gassed. He's not going to yeah. be able to shoot, like, full, you know. I don't know. Your man over here was dropping some 40, 45 uh, I lost. Shots. I lost my legs a little in the second half. Well, I mean, what happened shooting, though, bro? I was impressed. I was like, who is this dude just pulling? What up? happened like, is Curry. well, he just had to because our, our yeah, best I mean, player was getting we, shut out. We had we had nothing. <laughs> it, it's mostly me and Michael, the guy that was doubled from the tip. He, he's the taller blonde, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was the one that you like. He popped off against the C team. Mm-hmm. I know, and so, then so they were so, scouting. Yeah. 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 Oh come I on, knew. now this isn't our first time <laughs> yeah. winning intramurals. I know. <laughs> we knew at that point we we're like, oh, we're done. <laughs> he was just getting. He was getting triple team too. Like there's points where. And he just could not do anything. It was bad. Yeah, he was locked a little bit. I'm not yeah, we need Carter to go full on Curry to end up well, and getting we a chance. Still got smacked. I know. So, <laughs> it is what it is. But, this um, is our first semester intramurals. We did, yeah. we did better than we thought. That's for sure. Yeah, we thought we were. But, we were even on like the show. We were like, oh, we're gonna go zero and ten. We <laughs> so. Oh and whatever. But I mean, no. at least we no, we're, we're, we're we're saving the zero wins for football. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's, you guys gotta start somewhere, right? Like, yeah, you know, Josh and I, we started from nothing. 
I mean, our first year we actually made it to the championship for Pike. We played against D-Sig, which was crazy. There was like probably 200 people. Like, you know on the court uh, where the racquetball is at with like oh, the stand? Yeah. It was packed like all the way around. We ended up losing in that game, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah, I know. That's cr- I, I always forget, forget how, how new you guys are. It. Yeah, I mean, we've, yeah. Only been, we've only been a chartered fraternity for a year and a half, and then we were That's on crazy. campus as a colony for a year and a half. Are you guys chartered? Not or are you guys still considered a colony? Yeah. yeah. What's your guys' like timeline for getting your charter? Because ours was like two, two years. Two years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ours was a year, but yeah. then COVID happened, so that kind of threw like a wrench in the yeah. plans. Well, we have like a weird thing where it's like you have to become a learning community, so you have mm-hmm. to do like requirements. Like you have to get like someone on campus to become like a faculty fellow. Oh really? Call it. And then like you have to like designate like learning space, like a uh, community, like studying space Mm -hmm. every week and you have to like get all these like random things that you have to do so it's not just like you know you have to like work towards that and then once they do that they consider your charter okay it's like it's a weird process yeah Yeah, i don't know any of it yeah (laughs) Yeah, he's on exec he knows i shoot him on the only reason that he ended up joining was because i was like that's kept on egging it on i rushed i rushed ato last semester okay and i didn't make it which honestly i was surprised but did you rush any other fraternities when you joined? No, I didn't. I think that's kind of the cool thing about Pike when we all started is it, they came, I think, a month after rush happened for all the freshmen. Oh, yeah. So a lot of the guys had never rushed before because they didn't think of themselves as a frat, you know? And mm-hmm. Pike came on and they gave this pitch that they wanted to be a fraternity. And that was something I could really get behind. And people kind of make fun of it and that's whatever, but it's something that I bought into. And it's I think we stand out for that reason in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. We try to hold ourselves to a different standard. And that's why I joined. I mean, Josh, I think, kind of had the similar things. Like, we didn't rush initially, and that's what made the group so special in the beginning. Yeah, and I feel like that's kind of, I mean, I don't know how other Greek life is on, like, the other campuses, but I feel like that's what's kind of shifting the culture on at Boise State specifically is kind of that, like, you know, obviously when you, like, think of, like, a fraternity or, like, a frat, you think, like, parties, like, yeah. nonstop. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that's, like, a different, like, Boise State, like, at least with, like, the newer ones, are trying to, like, change that narrative where it's more, like, you know, bettering yourselves and not just, like, a social drinking club type of thing. Yeah, and, I mean, I think it's important to have that aspect as much as, you know, the university doesn't want to acknowledge that. Everyone went to college at one point, right? Like, everyone knows that you need to have some type of a social impact to have fun in college, and, you know, that's what you do join Greek organizations for, but I think the one thing that's cool about Boise State and Greek life that I really appreciate is being able to be friends with other organizations. Like, I know, like, the big SEC schools, like, the Pikes can't be friends with the Sigma guys, or, like, you can't, you oh, can't yeah. interact outside of your organization mm-hmm. just because it's so, you know, they got the big houses, they got this big reputation to hold up, and I love that we're able to hop on a podcast with right. two Sigma apps, really, you know, mm-hmm. and no one's going to be Especially like... Especially after whooping our... <laughs> <laughs> in basketball, but so... I just think, I think it's a really good community, and I think, yeah. obviously, the university, and every university is going to have that struggles of, like, that social drinking thing, but it's also college, like... Let yeah. the kids live a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. Um, anyways, uh, glad you like basketball. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, we actually have our brackets here mm-hmm. for March Madness. So I didn't print mine. I, remember, yeah, I, I, I didn't print any I of them. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we can bring yours up on the screen, and I probably can pull mine on the computer or on the, my Dude, phone. You're not going to be able to see it from here. No. <laughs> I might be able to pull <laughs> mine up on, oh, on okay. my phone. I can just click on the link that I sent you. Okay. Disclaimer, this is also the first bracket that I've ever made in my 21 years of being alive. So. I mean, really? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was telling him, like, I really enjoy basketball, I really enjoy sports, but I just have never made a priority to make a bracket. Like, it just was something I was super interested in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I always love watching the games. I love a good upset. I love, yeah. love those game winners. I don't know if I'm, like, di- like, I feel like I'd rather, even though I don't like basketball, I'd much rather go to a basketball game than a football game because of the mentality of it and, like, the aspect where it's just crazy. It just goes crazy. Like I think it depends. I don't know. I think, I, 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 I think college basketball is more exciting compared to like NBA because like yeah they're playing for something a little bit more I believe like in the regular season. Well, and there's less games, so every game means a little more. Yes. Well, they're all working towards a goal, which is the NBA too. Like, and it's super competitive to get to the NBA, mm-hmm. where it's like they're all like working absolutely crazy. Like, I mean, obviously you have to work a ton in the NBA, but it's like once you get past that barrier, mm-hmm. some people kind of go like, oh, I've already made it up to this point so it's like i think the coolest thing about college basketball to me is the conference tournament at the end of the year every year because 
you could lose every game all year, mm -hmm. and you still make that tournament. You still have a chance to win your conference. So everyone yeah. has something to care about. Where I think that's the beauty about sports, to be honest. Like sorry to interrupt, but I think it's cool that any team can lose on any given day. Yeah. And yeah, I know. That applies to every single sport. Like there is no, you could bet a thousand dollars on a team winning, and they could still lose. Like mm -hmm. there's no guaranteed win. Yeah. Yeah, well, you look at the NBA, like, right now, and there's, like, ten teams who have already, like, kind of checked out. Mm -hmm. That's why I really like college, because no matter what, at the end of the season, you have a shot. So yeah. that's did, why. You, did you see in the NBA that they're gonna, they are proposing a rule that there has to be a minimum game played requirement for big awards, like MVP, defensive player? That's but, smart. Yeah. I, th I think that's smart. I, mean, I don't know what they'll make it, but... It should be interesting, because it's 72 games. I think it should at least be half. Like, yeah, like... I mean, I mean, out of eight, I would say probably sixty. Yeah, I mean, let him miss twenty-two. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of stupid. Yeah. If you're getting the like MVP to someone who like just like is sitting out yeah. like a ton, and it's like does he even really care? Wait, is it seventy-two point? games or how many? It's is it? eighty-two. Eighty-two. Oh, yeah. 82. I'm, I'm dyslexic, so <laughs> blame it on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, don't worry about your bracket because <laughs> it's probably not as bad as mine. My first one was actually for the show last year. Oh, really? I haven't, uh, I haven't looked at yours yet. You, you were wild last year. So I know. I'm curious you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more tame this in this year. Um, I doubt that. Yeah. Uh, your, this is your kind of topic, so do you want to lead it? You want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. How do you want me to go? You want me to go through every game or what? Let's go um, first round, like just rounds. It, okay. Does that make sense? Or should we do, what do you think? Rounds, it's your guys' are show. Rounds I don't conference. Wanna, I mean, it might make sense to, like, if you have any crazy, like, upsets picked right off the first round. So if we're going to go through every round, yeah, we can we're definitely going to go over it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. My biggest upsets in round one, I have Kent State, 13, beating Indiana. Uh, honestly, that's really the only uh, round one upset. Both really? sides of the bracket? I mean, there are, like, little ones, like, tens over sevens, but... Did you pick Boise we, we State? Can, we could throw it up here. I picked him to win one. Yeah. I picked him to win one. Am I the only one that didn't? Man, I mean, just a wow. hater, bro. Come on, it's... <laughs> it's like a 50-50 chance, and you go to one of the schools. you got to pick it. I mean, uh, I don't... Okay, my thing was, like, when I picked my bracket, the biggest, like, deciding factor was how they fared up against top 25 teams, um, or, like, the top teams. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I mainly picked off of. And I mean, I don't we think go, Boise, but, Boise but, State lost to Utah State, like, twice. Utah State's but, but a good team. Utah State's a, they, they've been playing good basketball. Uh, I don't know. I just. But think about it. Anyone could be anyone any given day. That's true. So why would you bet against your, going to be your alma mater? That yeah. is true. But I just, I don't know. Last would you, year, would I, you bet money on Northwestern winning? Like, if there's money on the line? Oh, hell no, no. I would not. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't, like, either I would like pick it, but involved. I just, I don't know. Last I, think, year, I think we have a good chance. Yeah. I think I think our chances of winning out of the 64 is a lot higher than Memphis last year. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a horrible draw. Well, Memphis shouldn't even have been, like, They shouldn't seed. have been a nine. They, yeah. they had the talent of a four. They just dealt with injuries and young guys not meshing early in the year. They mm -hmm. put it together. And we, we didn't have a chance. And we probably shouldn't have been an eight that year either. No. I feel I, like. They gave, what they get? They gave Colorado. Colorado, Colorado, Colorado State, was State was a six. And yeah. we were we had a better record. We beat them head to head. San Diego State and we was won an eight too last year, and we yeah. beat them twice. Mm -hmm. We beat them three times last a year. Three, yeah, like yeah. It'll be interesting. I'm excited. Did you go to like the the showing that they had? I didn't know. No, did you? This year? Yeah. No, I didn't even know it was happening. They didn't this even year. announce it until like yesterday. Yeah, that I had they're no doing idea. this like drawing, but. Um, who do you have? Who do you have winning the bracket? The whole thing? Yeah. Or what's your final four? Would you, like, have... Okay. You want to just go from the Elite Eight? Yeah, we can go Elite Eight. All right. Um, Out of... I'll go first. Out of the South, I have Alabama, the one, against Arizona, the two. But I I think it's a total coin flip between Creighton and Arizona to get there. Out of those, I'll take Bama. In the East, I have five-seed Duke and two-seed Marquette. I actually have Memphis beating Purdue in the second round, beating really? the one-seed, and yeah, then that's Duke fantastic. beating Memphis. Here's my logic. Okay, break it down. Purdue is really good. Matt Painter's an elite offensive coach, but it's all, it's kind of all Edie. It's kind of all Edie. They're, is that the tall guy? Yeah. And he's incredible, don't get yeah. me wrong. But their guards are pretty weak, and they're not as good at handling the ball and handling pressure as a lot of guards are. Memphis sends guys at you. 
They, really? They press you, their guards are like scrappy and fast and aggressive. So it's strength versus weakness there. And I so does I'm given I'm they giving them play a shot. man or do they play in a zone? They mostly go man. They they run a couple different presses though that just really like they dominated a lot of teams in the AAC this year and I think that they have a shot at Purdue. So I got Duke over Marquette there. In the Midwest, I have Houston. I think Houston has a really easy road to the Elite Eight. And then I have Texas, but I almost picked Texas A&M, the seven over Texas. Oh, I think really? That's a second-round matchup. Actually, I did. I put, yeah, I put Texas A&M. They're really good. I, that's a second-round matchup, and I'm saying right now, whoever wins that game in the second round is going to go to the Final Four out of that. So I have Texas over Houston. And then... I have UConn over UCLA in the West. I have, so I have UConn upsetting Kansas. That UConn really upsetting good. Kansas? Yeah, and then actually it goes farther than that. I uh, I have Bama over Duke in the Final Four, and then Texas UConn. I. <sighs> that's your that's your final. Texas UConn, UConn is my second Final Four game, and I'm so torn on it. I think I'm gonna go Texas, and then I'll take. Bama over Texas for the championship. That will all change in the next few days. I've already filled out like 15. Yeah. You filled out 15 brackets? Yeah, man. Dude, it took me forever to fill up this, this one. This is <laughs> like, this is my favorite time of year. I this spend, is your bread and butter. I spend all year watching college basketball, looking at all the stats of these stupid teams you've never heard of, all for this. I and, like it. Uh, I respect that. I respect that. I do that every year, and every year I lose the people who have never watched a game. <laughs> How frustrating! So, how frustrating is that? Oh, it's it's awful, but it's also what makes this so fun. So, do you ever do like a fun bracket where you just do like your favorite colors or your favorite mascots? Because I have like a, a lot of friends who don't watch any sports and yeah. they'll just pick like their favorite mascot or their favorite oh, really? color and they'll <laughs> and they'll beat everyone in their in wow. their brackets. I've seen like someone who did like the mascots, like who would win mm -hmm. over the mascots. Like I've like seen in a those. Fight? Yeah, like, yeah, that's awesome. But man, that. That must be so horrible. To like, All I know is if they're doing a fight, Buster's beating whatever Northwestern is. <laughs> Wait, what is Northwestern's? Wildcats. Wildcats? Oh, no, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Of oh. course. <laughs> I don't know. You know, Buster's kind of... Our Buster this year is kind of fit. I mean, he's been... You know, he was doing, like, push-ups on, like, uneven surfaces. Like, they are like, holding him up, and he was doing, like... Yeah. It was ridiculous. Last year, I knew the Buster. Um, and this year, I think it's two, isn't it? I think, I mean, I think I always have a rotation, but I remember I knew based off the shoes that the Buster was wearing, and one time Buster was coming up to me, and they were telling me that they were going to throw popcorn on me at a basketball game, and I saw Buster come up with that popcorn, and I looked him right in the face, and I said, you are not doing that to me. I'm not about getting Dude. a jumbo prawn, about getting a bag of popcorn and just dumped on my head. One time, I was at the game, or at a basketball game, just like ready to report on it, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden... I just feel someone grab my shoulders, and I'm like, duh, like, what the hell? And then all of a sudden, look, it's a, br like, Buster, and he's just, like, giving me a, I'm like, what the, it was so weird. I didn't, I don't know who the bust. I didn't know who the Buster was last mm. year. Uh, I probably didn't know him if they took off the, you know, costume either. I don't know if they did a reveal. I think I won't say just, just, just Yeah, in just case, in case. Yeah keep it disclosed but like i was so confused i'm like what the hell like yeah, they literally funny. would skip out oh, yeah it was so who, who's in your who's in your lead eight um i got uh i have so i had alabama versus virginia so i did have alabama winning that i had alabama versus arizona in the south and arizona wins that one i had um sorry to your winner over there um so i had alabama so that's arizona for the South, for the East, I ha actually had Purdue losing to Memphis. Really? Yeah. yeah. Can you I stop? Had... Every time I think I'm <laughs> yeah. clever with something, you do the same thing. I, I know. You're talking I, about that. North like, Carolina that last that year. North Carolina, I picked them to upset the one. I'm like, yo, check this out. And you're like, oh, me too. <laughs> you know, not going to lie. I think the brackets are actually kind of similar. This year? And that, I don't know if that's insulting to you because I didn't know what I was doing when I picked them. So, <laughs> just saying. Keep going, um, let me see. So I had Memphis playing against Tennessee and then Tennessee winning. So I have Tennessee versus Marquette. Uh, so I have Marquette going all the, all the way there. And Marquette have, beating Tennessee. I have Tennessee losing round one. Really? Yeah. To who? Louisiana. Huh. Man, I was I about to... I think Tennessee's a fraud. Really? Yeah. 
Um, I could see that. I mean, but I have Marquette. They winning. just lost their point guard to an ACL. That's true. Didn't didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was just picking. But okay, so I have then I have Marquette beating Tennessee. So I have Marquette versus Arizona, and then of those two, I have Marquette winning. So I have Marquette facing off for the first side, and then. Um, I also have Texas A&M versus Texas. I picked Texas A&M, though. Mm-hmm. And I have Texas A&M actually making it, um, beating Auburn, because I had them upsetting Houston. Whoa. There. Um, yeah, Auburn beating Houston. I did. Hot, very hot take, very scorching. You can say that. Scorching yeah. take. But I, you know, I had them winning, and then I have Auburn versus Texas A&M, and then Texas A&M winning. Uh, and then... For them, I put them against, you know, my West is probably the most tame. I have Kansas versus Gonzaga for that one. Uh, so that was probably the, like, the most like normal one, I would say. And then I have Kansas winning that one. So, so it's you Kansas. Got, you got Kansas and then. Kansas versus Texas A&M. Oh and then Arizona versus Marquette in the Final Four. What's crazy is I could actually see A&M in the Final Four. It's Auburn in the Elite Eight that I think is insane. <laughs> Dude, watch it happen. What? It's going to happen. I'm going to look so smart. Uh, and then I have actually Texas a and <laughs> upsetting Kansas wow. and getting to the, to the championship. Missing with that. <laughs> so I got, and then I got Marquette beating Arizona. So I got Marquette versus Texas A&M. Marquette over Texas A&M. And I actually, even better, have Marquette winning it all. <laughs> Marquette over Texas A&M. Okay. Dropping a nuke on every bracket. That's... If I win, it's it'll be bracket. a miracle. It's your, bracket. it's your piece. It's it'll your be piece. a miracle if I win. But Carter, do you think there's going to be any nice. standout players like a, like a John Morant of this tournament? Like from a small school or just from any school? In general. I mean, Edie for Purdue is going to get his. He's ridiculous. Uh, How Keith, tall is he? 7'3"? I think so. 7'2 or 7'3". Uh, Kansas State has Keontae Johnson, who was at Florida for a few years. And the one that had the heart attack yeah. or whatever, the cardiac arrest? Yeah, so he's at Kansas State hooping right now. Yeah. Uh, Marcus Carr on Texas, I, I'm super high on. And then Brandon Miller at Alabama, mm-hmm. who had some off-the-court issues. But he's back now, and uh, I think that he's maybe the best player in the tournament. What's his teammate's name that was part of the Jelly Fam? Uh, it starts with a J. I can't it? even remember. I think he's number five. He plays for Alabama right now. I know who you're talking about. I don't. I don't know his name. I'm not gonna. Yeah, fake basketball fan. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where's some other guy? Jaime Hawkes on UCLA is really good. He's really good. Is he the one with like the super crazy hair? No, that's Tiger Campbell. Hi- he's Tiger Campbell. The guy with like the yeah yeah that's, that's Tiger hype. Campbell. That's hype, man. I know I'm forgetting some people. Marcus Sasser plays for Houston, probably their best player. He got hurt a couple games ago pretty badly. Don't know if he's going to be back for the first round, which is a big deal. Um, Don't sleep on Max Rice, though, man. I, <laughs> gonna be did, 25 you can throw Max Rice in there if you want. Oh, we forgot to mention. Yeah, we got uh, in a wind dance in. I think well, we kind of talked did. about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're the nine. Where are we? Nine seed, right? Ten. Ten. Ten against Northwestern. Yeah. Uh, did we need Max Rice to score at least twenty? To I don't even know if yeah, we he can played even... terrible against Utah State. We need, Max Rice needs enough. to have a good shooting game, and then Tyson and Lucas need to control the boards for sure. Yeah. And Marcus needs to. And we need to not. No, I'm not gonna say that. Just not turn it over. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, we control need to not ball. lose. <laughs> we haven't. I mean. I feel like that's the biggest knock on our team is that we haven't won a like a NCAA tournament win. Yeah. Or like ever. a game. Really? Ever. We've never we've never made it past never. 64. Oh and eight we've all time. Never. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Like, yeah, I mean if anyone's gonna do it, I think this team has think, a chance. I don't think Northwestern has either. It really? Off the top of my head. Someone's gonna have so. to get it. I mean hopefully it's us, but Oh, I Isaiah Wong on Miami too. It just popped into my head. It's yeah. really good. Oh, I'm excited. This is always a fun time. It's like when the least amount of schoolwork gets done in the classroom because everyone's watching the game. Oh, yeah, for real. Yeah. yeah. It was like when, I mean, since I'm a big soccer fan, it was like when the World Cup was on. I was in uh, biochemistry, and I was, like, watching the games. I told my professor one time, it was when USA was playing um, England. It was on a Tuesday at noon. That's when my biochem class was. And I went to him during his office hours on Monday because Tuesday we'd always have a quiz. And I went, hey. It's every four years, huge game. Can we not have the quiz? 
mm-hmm. and he looks at me, he goes, so you're asking me now I have the quiz? I'm like, yeah, like, if you have the quiz, like, I'm probably not going to show up. He goes, wait, so you're not going to show up to class on Tuesday if I don't have the quiz? He goes, yeah. I was like, okay, we're not having the quiz. Because <laughs> he just didn't want me to show up to class. I love that teacher. Wow. Shout out to Dr. Cornell. He shot me with a Nerf gun in class to wake me up a few times. He was an awesome professor. Really? Yeah. But no more Madness is always fun. Is the game at 7 on Thursday? Ours? Yeah. Right. He actually, uh, so we were talking about like the shilling last year. Mm-hmm. He actually. Okay. He, I know, that's Eastern. So 535. Oh, wow. We had, like, the, we had the selection Sunday little thing that we State had. And he won tickets to the game last oh, yeah. year. Oh, really? They he did, was, like, one of, like, They did three. a drawing. Well, originally, they did a drawing of everyone who went to the selection Sunday thing. Mm. And they picked, like, three people. And then they were like, you know what? We're going to open it up for more. So they sent out an email. They're like, first come, first serve. We have more tickets. So I was, like, in line at a restaurant. And I left to go back home to get my computer. And I won. Really? And so I got and I got a plus one. So, me and my roommate, uh, they they like bust us down to Portland, paid for our hotels, yeah. and the buses, and everything, and they gave us fifty bucks a day for food. So that's not bad. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah my our our <coughs> team manager Kenzie got that opportunity to go to Portland. She says a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. It could have been more fun if we would have won, but yeah, yeah, extended the trip a little bit longer. It was still good. Yeah, I like our matchup. I'm gonna be honest. I'm excited for the guys. This is the best draw we could have gotten. Honestly, because yeah. Northwestern is probably the worst seven seed, and UCLA I think is the worst two seed. Well, before they had us at Kentucky or playing Kentucky, yeah, that would have yeah, been, 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 been rough. Really, that would have been, 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 been. They had us no way we're getting Kentucky first in Ohio. No way. Like, it would have been basically a home game for them. Yeah, that would have been. <sighs> yeah. Right. Oh, go well. your elite eight. Yeah, you're leading. Read it. Oh yeah, let's. I if you can <laughs> uh, get okay. the glasses in. Yeah, so I got Alabama. Versus Baylor, I got Alabama winning that in the South, and then Midwest, I got Houston versus Texas, I got Houston winning it. Um, in the East, I got Purdue versus Kentucky, I got Purdue mm-hmm. winning that. In the West, I got Kansas versus UCLA, I got UCLA winning, and then I got Alabama taking it all the way. Yeah, yeah I don't, Bama, I don't really. Bama I don't, over Houston. Yeah, Bama okay. over Houston. I feel like that's the most like fair one. I mean, I mean, I just, those I, are two one seeds, and that's what I'm kind of afraid of. Yeah, like, I mean, I just kind of went off of, like, the teams that I kind of know a little bit about. I yeah. Mean, like I was telling you earlier before we started the show is I enjoy basketball. I'm a really good fan, but I just never made a priority to, like, do all the research and stuff you said. Yeah. So I was just kind of like, yeah. okay, I just kind of picked the one seeds and whatnot. And also the, the one that I made it for is with, like, my family. So there's, like, no oh, money yeah. on the line. So it's yeah. just for fun. The fraternity has, like, a big bracket. I think there's, like, 40 guys doing it for $10. Buy-in buy-in for that? Just 10 dollars. bucks. Oh, yeah. But Dude, I don't know if I'll do it or not. done a buy-in. We you guys still can. The bracket's yeah. still open. I know, but there no one wants to. We're really? just broke. Dude, I did one for the Boise Hawks. I just yeah. entered it today. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely gonna enter a lot. Yeah. One, once You've I already done it. 15. How many more are you planning on doing, bro? Well, no. I I make all these <laughs> Do you change ones. Them or diff- Hold on. I make all these ones and then I decide on one and then I enter that one in all the pools. That's, wait, so what's the point of making all 50, like, for... You gotta see how it looks, man. You gotta see how it looks. You gotta see what feels right. Like, I, my first instinct is Bama over Texas, but it just doesn't feel right, you know what I mean? I don't know. Props to you for <laughs> putting that much effort into it. No respect. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I mean, I put all that into it. You don't, and we ended on the same champion. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bama's, Bama's awesome, though. Bama, do you follow the NBA at all? Yeah. So when James Lightly. Harden, like when Harden was on the Rockets, like it was all threes and all layups. Yeah. That's what Bama is. Oh, really? So, well, let's see if I can remember the numbers off the top of my head. In the James Harden era, they were, uh, they took the least amount of mid-range jumpers per game every single year that Harden was there. Oh, really? Yeah, every single year, and it was less than two a game. Bama's taking .6 mid-range jumpers per game this year, mm-hmm. so it's all threes. Do they just run a high pick and roll to get the layups? Or they run they? A, well, they run a lot of like ghost screens. They run a lot of pick and fades. It's all threes. It's all layups, and so their coach was like a math teacher, mm-hmm. so it's all super analytical, and mm-hmm. they also give up mid-ranges. Like, teams take mid-ranges against oh, really? them more than anyone, because if you, if you screen them when you're on offense, you come off, they play drop coverage. They drop, oh, okay. and they so teams shoot like three floaters a game against them, which is the most by far in the country. So interesting. You know, the, st- the stats side of any sport, especially the NBA, is fascinating. 
Yeah, I just think if you have to rely on mid ranges against a team taking more efficient shots, you might be screwed. So, yeah, Josh, who did you pick as your winner? Um, I picked uh, Kansas Jayhawks. I had them win last Jayhawks. year, and I won um, the pool of money for my fraternity. So I'm going back to them two years in a row. Back to back, old back faithful, back. huh? I mean, that's a like. I mean, that's such a flex to win March Madness. I feel yeah. like because it's like it's so. It's basically just like luck, I feel like. You know uh, Quentin Grimes on Kansas last year? had uh -huh. plays for uh, the Knicks. Mm -hmm. Dude, he got so much attention. He's, a, he's an attractive individual. And, like, no one really <laughs> knew about him. And then he, like, made it that far. And, like, all the girls, all my friends are, like, reposting about him winning. Yeah. And I'm like, this guy. That's what Marsh Madness can do for you. <laughs> it's, like, ridiculous, dude. I'm trying to think of another person like that. Okay, not the same type of he's thing, but you remember? <laughs> Doug. Huh? Doug last year. That's exactly what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, like obviously it's not the same situation, but he got way more famous because of a couple. Yeah, I mean, that literally could games. be Boise State if you think about it. Like a smaller school that people know about, you yeah. know, if Max Rice drops 30 points in the first game, he's going to get a lot of media attention for that. That's that true. true. Yeah, especially because the next game would be against UCLA. <laughs> Big one. What about Oral Roberts? Oral Roberts? They oh, might no. lose to Duke by 25 in the first round. Yeah. What's. What sucks, I would pick Oral Roberts over any other five seed in the entire tournament, but Duke is... Two years ago, they had, like, a little run. Yeah, they were 15. And yeah. They, I think they won two games, maybe three, but anyway. Yeah. Let's go over this NFL stuff before we get out of here. Yeah. Are you, do you follow NFL? Yeah. I, yeah. I'm a pretty well, like, versed, like, sports fan. Like, I don't dive heavily into any sport, but I enjoy all of them. Okay. Yeah, um, so, free agency... There's a ton that just happened. Yeah, like, free agency <laughs> open today. Uh, but before that, the Panthers traded for the first overall pick, which yep. we thought it might be the Colts, we thought it might be the Raiders, it ends up being Carolina. They traded number 9, number 61 this year, a first and a second next year, and DJ Moore. Who are they taking then? Well, uh, it's either Anthony, I mean, you, I, you know it's coming out of I my mouth. I think they're taking Anthony, Anthony Richardson. Richardson. I think they are. Anthony Richardson. They just want another Cam Noon, huh? Yep. Yeah, I, I think they, they have to be taken up. I think I actually think they genuinely. If I'm thinking there. objectively, I think the most likely person for them to take is Stroud. There's no way they're taking Stroud because they're so. They're They've like, been linked to him. The thing is, is that like, the issue is, is that they're looking for that big quarterback, like that big name, because they're afraid of going Stroud irrelevant. Is a big name. Yeah, I'd say C.J. Stroud's a bigger name than Anthony Richardson. Yeah, but Anthony Richardson is way more like talent wise. And way more kind of like he's got more potential. He's more potential, as what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, oh, okay. I think that's what they're trying to go for. Is um, they're trying to go for that higher ceiling all star type of like player, which is fair. I mean, if every player in this draft reaches their full potential, Anthony Richardson's the best player. Like his ceiling is higher than anybody in this draft. And I mean, there's nobody higher on Anthony Richardson than me, as far as I know. But. Well, I, I think he's a bust, but I think that's what they're going to pick first round. I, that's what I, I think. You think Anthony Richards is going to be a bust? Yeah, I think so. Really? I, I think, think he's QB1. I don't think he's going to be that future good. Future All-Pro. He's going to be so good. He's a dog right Although now. Although, I have no idea who he's going to be throwing to in Carolina. Yeah. Well, they got Especially really without more. more. I mean, their wide receiver one's Terrace Marshall Jr. Like, that's bad. But we'll see. Yeah. Free agency is open. Maybe they go get Juju, I guess. I, I Dude, don't know. I lost a lot of respect for Juju on the way he handled winning that that game, like with posting about it. He, yeah, he threw. It's AJ Brown. And he everything. threw shots like unnecessarily. Well, like I just think he didn't really do much up to that point, anyways. He, he didn't, and this may be a hot take. You, I want kind of interested in your opinion. I don't think that ball was catchable. I don't think that ball that Patrick Mahomes threw to Juju on that holding call was a catchable ball. And I also don't mm -hmm. think Patrick Mahomes saw the holding call initially. Oh he yeah, he probably didn't. Uh, the catchable part. It's kind of a moot point because it, yeah. it was hold, it was holding, right? Yeah, it was holding. Yeah. But it was also within the first five yards, which I thought there could be contact, right? There could be yeah. contact. Well, it's, it's just, there can't be a PI within the first five yards. You can't tug after his jersey. Five. It, was, yeah. it was the jersey tug that got it was, him. It was soft, though. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. yeah. Especially, well, that was like the whole thing, like how they were calling the game up to that point. That was kind of not maybe not the best call. That's, that I agree with. I think that like, it was, like if you look... Textbook, it's a hold. Yeah, objectively, it's a hold. But the way they're calling the whole game, yeah. I, point, they they really like, weren't calling that whole game. Like yeah. even look at, I think it was the third quarter, or maybe the second quarter. Juju came across the middle. He got hit early, and they they didn't, they didn't call they that. Let it go. They just like 
So I let it play out. So I don't I mean, know. I that was kind of stupid, but I don't love just the fact that he posted but... like a Valentine's card, like thanks for holding on. I just thought that was like dumb, dude. It yeah. was like well, he was like trying to attack AJ Brown, and AJ Brown was doing much better the whole season than him. Yeah. I think I just if Bradbury would have been salty about it after the game and blame the rest for the loss or whatever, then that would be more just then Juju doing that would make more yeah. sense. Just, but he, like, Bradbury he was... went into the locker room and took full responsibilities. Like yeah, yeah. there's a hold. I got caught. Like yeah, I will say like. I think that Eagles organization for any young like football fan or any young sports fan is a great organization to look about. I think Jalen Hurts has his head screwed on right. Yeah, he's one he's of like awesome. became one of like the guys I look up to in terms of like guys in the professional atmosphere. I think Jason Kelsey is a phenomenal leader, and I also think that coach has really like ingrained in that organization like humility, honor, and respect. Because if you watch every single one of the players respond to that question, was it a holding or not? They owned up to it. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. said. We believe in the refs. We believe in their calls. You know, it's unfortunate that didn't go our way. And I just, I, I gained a lot of respect for that organization. I really like Jalen Hurts a lot. Like, yeah. I, I love what he stands me for. Me too. You're, you love yeah. Jalen Hurts. I, I, well, it's like, it's kind of funny because you compare Jalen Hurts to, like, another younger quarterback like Kyler Murray. And you hear so many issues with Kyler Murray. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously he's talented, but there's, like, reports that they're going to move off of him just because he's not, like, talent-wise, like, you know, just because he's not, like, personality-wise – maybe the best leader. There's I mean, at least reports to that. I think it's I mean, a lot of things. That I don't personally know Kyler Murray. It's like injuries and stuff too. But, yeah. but um, and then like with, you know, Jalen Hurts, they're like ready to pay him instantly. Like, yeah, he deserves it. Like, you know, with the whole talent along with like the leadership aspect is absolutely I also crazy. don't think he's the most talented quarterback either. Like, I, I know, think, me neither. I think like, I, the reason I admire Jalen Hurts the way I admire him is if you look back to Alabama in that championship game when he got pulled, Every time out, every time that they could run on the field, he was the first player to go talk to Tua. He was the first player to be there. Even after the interview when they won, he was happy yeah. for Tua. Mm-hmm. And I think that speaks loads and volumes of who he is as a character, you know, who he is as a man of faith. And you just look at how he is as a leader, and he, he's a natural leader. He's not talking yeah. too much. He's there when he needs to be said. He's soft-spoken. And when he talks, people listen, and I appreciate that about him. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I, I mean, completely agree. definitely going to be the star of the team for a long time. He deserves the money. It might yep. screw over the rest of the team, but he deserves the money. Yeah. I think they he, already lost Hargrave. I think he turned down money to keep players on the team. Like, I think I, so, too. I he think he's one like of the side of players. Granted, I mean, that, that's a little they've bit already lost. They've already lost a few guys, yeah. Yeah. so we'll see what happens. I, like but, Smith too. I mean, we're talking about fates of the franchise. Uh, the Raiders got their franchise quarterback. Okay, hope <laughs> first, Jalen Ramsey traded to the Dolphins. Oh, that's true. That yeah. Way. For about nothing. Yeah, that was bad. A that third a, round pick and a backup tight end that even I have never heard of. Yeah, so, I don't. They gave him away for like Jalen Ramsey chance. isn't what he was two years ago, but yeah, he's, but he's still he's still a top tier corner. Yeah, he's still a top five corner. Better than Eli Apple, that's for sure. <laughs> that yeah, like very there's. True. I mean, there's a, like a lack of good corners in the league, and so I thought that there's going to be way more of like a you know a, a give to yeah. get Jalen Ramsey, but when they yeah. traded him this for like. Is, this is big for Miami. They, for 50 that cents. could be good. And like, I think Miami needs a better offensive line, though. My dad's a Dolphins did. fan. He grew up watching well, yeah. Shula and Marino, mm-hmm. so that's kind of like being from Montana. You don't really like have a sports team. So mm-hmm. if I had to choose an NFL team, like the, the Finns, the I know my I know my dad's happy about them getting Jalen Ramsey. I bet. Yeah. What do you think about them resigning Tua or picking up his fifth year option? What did they do? They picked up his like fifth year option for his like rookie contract, so, so they just kind of gave him around one more year, one um, more year. I really like Tua as a quarterback. I've always had a soft spot for lefty quarterbacks. I think they're like <laughs> super fun to watch. I think like the way they throw is so unique. Um, I think he's a good quarterback. I think he just doesn't make the best decisions sometimes. He's got a good arm. Like no mm-hmm. one can really debate that. But I don't really know. I think maybe the concussions are caught up to him. So we'll yeah. see. I don't know what their I don't know what their backup plan is. That's the scariest well, part for me. Is they the signed Mike White today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's the backup plan right now. Quarterback competition. Mike White yeah. versus Tua. Um, First round versus... Was he unsigned? I think he was on free agent. Unsigned free agent. Yeah. Mike White, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's about all the time we have for today. Um, I just want to thank you, Zach, for coming on, um, putting up with us for... Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate hour. it. Yeah, it was yeah, awesome. Um, I had fun. Yeah, it was really awesome, you know, asking you questions, picking your brain, kind of making, you know, your bracket and everything for the <laughs> yeah. show. So, uh, yeah, um, is there anything you want to plug or anything? Yeah, just plug. So for the soccer team, we got our another home game coming up against C of I on the 18th. Um, that's going to be at 4. And then our final home game is April 29th against TVCC. 
You guys can follow any updates on the, the page at Boise State Men's Club Soccer on Instagram. And if you guys want to give me a personal follow, my Instagram is Zach underscore Tyree 11. So, yeah, just give a follow. Yeah, and we'll also throw up on the screen so you'll be able to easily see that. So, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, um, make sure to follow us as well on all of our social media platforms, uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Sports Stuff Show. On Twitter, it's SNS underscore show. Um, and, yeah, uh, we'll be back on Friday with our stuff episode. And thank you, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.